transitioning to a lighter local story. With warm temperatures rolling into the border city, minds might be wandering and envisioning the potential of an early summer. But with that, construction season would also coincide as R.J. Mackey takes a look at some of the projects slotted for the coming months. Phase 3 of Lloydminster's sanitary sewer replacement program will kick off this summer after taking a break last year. Multiple sanitary mains will be replaced and 48th Ave between 36th and 40th Street will be reconstructed. The city's annual water and sewer replacement program will upgrade city infrastructure installed prior to 1950, including replacing the water main along 47th Avenue and upgrading the road surfaces. When we do road construction, it's imperative that A, we look at the water and sewer work that needs to be done, and vice versa, because we don't want to be repaving over top again. While a lot of this infrastructure is out of sight, Mayor Albers says residents would be impacted if it failed. We go to our taps in the morning, we turn on our showers, we flush our toilets, we brush our teeth, and we expect clean water and we wait that wastewater to make its way out the door and not see it again. Local vendors ASL Paving and Rustway Constructions were awarded the contracts for this year's projects. To award two contracts to two local businesses and see a third business in the bidding is terrific. And we'll continue to hopefully see that. And that, you know, it is awarded based on dollars in these cases. It's simply how much do you bid to do the specific work. And again, two contractors locally have secured work for this coming year, which ensure local employees working and that money staying right within our community. The city will also review their sanitary sewer master plan to prioritize upgrading aging parts of Lloydminster's sewer system before there's issues. When it comes to project costs rising, the city is cautiously optimistic work will be done on time and on budget. Due to those tenders just closing recently, they have an idea of where asphalt is going to be, that they can lock in a contract price, I believe, for, for asphalt or know where it's going. Fuel is going to be the tough one, and I'm sure the contractor will be well aware of that. I don't think you'll see too much idling equipment uh, this coming summer. The city has created a web page where you can find information and updates on this year's water and sewer replacement program at lloydminster.ca slash WSRP. For Primetime Local News, I'm Jace Mackey. Research has identified that Canada's Métis population is a high-risk and underserved group when it comes to incidences of cancer. To combat the trend, a University of Saskatchewan project is looking to lower cancer rates in Métis people. It's a lot easier to prevent a cancer than it is to treat one. The study will focus on cultural connectivity and the role it can play in potentially eliminating risks of cancer. Dr. Gary Groot says that the basis of the project serves to examine a question. If you revitalize, revitalize culture, to what extent does that reduce the risk causing behaviors that result in cancer in the first place, like smoking, drinking, etc. Via partnerships with Saskatchewan's Metis communities, the project will identify areas of concern and aim to establish prevention programs. Not only are incidences rising in Indigenous communities of, for cancer um, in Saskatchewan, and, but also in, in Canada in general, but also they do, they do worse overall. They do worse because they often present late. They don't get, they don't do the same kind of screening things that other people do. Groot, along with other researchers, hopes to establish a preventative framework that can be applied in Metis communities across Canada. The Lloydminster Connect Club is running a blanket drive that will benefit victims of sexual assault. To learn more about it, our Nicole Gruber spoke with the club's president. Today for Primetime Local News, I'm joined with the president of the Lloydminster Connect Club, Linnell Freeton, to talk about their blanket drive they're hosting at the moment to collect blankets for the Lloydminster Sexual Assault Center. So thank you so much, Linnell, for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. So first off, do you mind letting us know a little bit more about this blanket drive and what it's all about? We are doing, this is our uh, second uh, year we've done it, so we're hoping to make it an annual, uh, annual thing. Uh, and we're collecting blankets uh, for the Little Bear Child and Youth Advocacy Center, um, which is uh, associated with the Lloyd Sexual Assault uh, Services. And they, uh, they provide support for uh, youth and families impacted uh, by abuse of any kind. And they provide blankets uh, to their clients to give them comfort 
uh, and security in, in a kind of upsetting, possibly upsetting time for them. And this is your second year of doing this and you are hoping to make this an annual event. So what was the decision behind collecting blankets for the sexual assault center? Well, um, like, like we said, we found out about this last, the need last year. And um, we love the fact that we can, um, can help out this important community partner. And uh, we're always looking to make new community partnerships um, and do as many service projects as we can and um, our motto is you know serve the community's greatest needs and uh, you know it's something that came to our attention that uh, we felt we could try and help out with. And as we know these blankets are going to the center but do we know who these blankets will be going towards and what they'll be used for? And uh, yeah as far as we know um, they will just be going towards anybody that the center has coming in uh, to uh, make use of their uh, services. So uh, any uh, you know, family members uh, that are, are going in uh, that need a blanket uh, or need a little bit of uh, possibly some comfort in a difficult situation. And you guys are looking for people to donate brand new blankets. So how can people go about donating those? So uh, if you know one of our lovely Kinets, um, you can get a hold uh, of her um, and she can make it some arrangements with you um, or you can message us uh, on our Facebook page uh, and our email is on our website um, as well. So those are probably the three, three best ways um, to get a hold of us and we will get back to you and figure something out. And what sort of blankets are you guys hoping to get? Um, pretty much anything really, um, any, uh, you know, basically, you know, new, um, hopefully of course, but, uh, any, any size, color, shape, <laughs> really, it's all, uh, it's all going to go to, uh, a good cause, so. And is there anything else that you would like to mention that we haven't already touched on? Uh, I think that's about it. Um, oh, we'll be collecting until uh, April 5th. Um, so you have any, any time until then to, um, to get a hold of us. Um, and a shameless plug, we've also got a um, rib week uh, that we're selling tickets for as well. So <laughs> if you're, and you're in that as well, you can let us know. Yes, yeah, so again, if you are wanting to donate a blanket, if you happen to know a Connect member, you can always get in contact with them to donate, or you can find any information on their Facebook page or their website if you were wanting to donate a blanket to this great cause. Thank you again, Linnell, for coming on and doing this interview today. Yes, thank you very much for uh, getting hold of us. This past weekend, the Lakeland College women's basketball team had their toughest challenge of the season. But with the home crowd having their back, the Rustlers cashed their ticket to the CCAA Nationals. Evan Kenny has more. There's a reason to celebrate Lakeland region. Saturday night, the Rustlers women's basketball team was crowned champions once again. The chance to host a championship doesn't happen very often and, and to win one on your home floor is just amazing. So back-to-back uh, -back for us is, is, a, is a cool feeling, but to know our last ACAC game was here in front of our fans winning, that's a pretty awesome thing to have. People's had to step up today and it obviously showed that they did and anyone can come in at any given time and uh, give valuable minutes. So just goes to show how special this team is and yeah I'm just ecstatic and so proud of everyone. Back in November when the regular season began Lakeland had one thing and one thing only on their minds. Win. Our goal the whole year was to go undefeated to host this conference championship to win it go to nationals and obviously we want to win nationals if that's possible so we checked the box tonight but it, it was not the regular eight months of work it almost felt like it was two and a half years since we didn't go to nationals and we're building towards this. This was league MVP and team captain Tori Dugan's final game in the Lakeland College gym. Owing it to our fans and everyone that came out for the support, um, our program does a great job getting out in the community and you can obviously tell with the amount of people that came tonight and over the whole weekend.
The Rustlers are the first back-to-back ACAC women's basketball champions since the 2001-2002, 2002-2003 Mount Royal Cougars. Nationals will take place in Nanaimo on the 25th. Evan Kenny, Primetime Local Sports. Now for another look at some temperatures in and around the border city, let's toss to Shelby Clark. Tate now taking another look at your weather forecast. We'll be starting off with the central region of our provinces here. On the Alberta side, we definitely have warmed up uh, right now. Compared to what we've been seeing yesterday, we have been seeing those plus temperatures, but no spots seem to be in the minus area right now on the Alberta side for the most part, besides here in the border city. But um, a cold lake is sitting at that zero mark, while it's nine degrees in Rocky Mountain House and Red Deer, 10 degrees in Edmonton, while Edson is sitting at that seven degree mark, four in Jasper and Whitecourt, and Athabasca is just hitting five degrees. Now switching over to our Saskatchewan side, yes, they've they're cooled down quite a bit compared to the Alberta side, but they are still seeing those single digit marks. Uh, like the border city, uh, North Battleford is sitting at minus one, one degree in Saskatoon, while Meadow Lake is at minus two, and the rest are seeing minus four. Now, going over to our northern region now to see what they're sitting at, they are seeing some slightly warmer temperatures compared to yesterday. Uh, they are seeing those single digit points, even though they are in the minus area, minus nine in Stony Rapids, while well as minus six in South End and Flint Flon, minus seven in Wollaston Lake. LaVron just sitting at minus three and the rest are seeing around minus five degrees. Now switching over to this end here they are seeing some slightly warmer temperatures with most spots seeing in those plus temps. Uh, Grand Prairie is at six degrees, Slave Lake is at three, zero in Peace River while Fort McMurray is just hitting that one degree mark and high level in Fort Chapon are slightly cooler seeing minus seven, minus eight. And now going over to our southern region they aren't looking too bad whatsoever. Uh, they are even seeing those uh, double digit points in their plus uh, areas. Uh, Lethbridge is at 13 degrees. Medicine is at 14 while Calgary is at 12. And coordination and Bath are slightly cooler at 4 and 5 but they are still seeing past that minus point so they're looking still pretty warm. Now over on the Saskatchewan side they are seeing those single digit points but they are seeing those plus temperatures as well. 6 in Moose Jaw while there's 4 in uh, Swift Current. 3 in Regina and Kindersley and Esteban is just hitting that 5 degree mark and Yorkton is just at that 0 mark. And now going back across the region we will be seeing what we will expect to see in the evening and throughout the night tonight. We will be Seeing some beautiful evening lows for sure across the region. Um, Munich will just be seeing that zero mark for their evening low. Provost will be seeing a low of minus one, while Paradise Hill, Meadow Lake, and Rainwright will be seeing a low of minus two. Uh, Unity will be seeing a low of minus three, while Pearson and Bonneville together both be seeing a low of minus four, and Isla Cross will be seeing the coolest with a low of minus five. But we will be seeing some nice evening lows, definitely compared to what we're used to. So, yes, spring is coming right around the corner here. Isla Cross will be seeing a high chance of some flurries, while Meadow Lake and Pearson will be seeing a high chance of some showers throughout the evening. Now ending off with our three-day forecast for here in the border city, we'll be seeing a beautiful Wednesday. As I was saying yesterday, we'll be seeing a nice uh, hump day for Wednesday, seeing a nice sunnier skies with a lot of sun with that one degree mark throughout the day. So I'd suggest going out and enjoying it if you want to enjoy some nice, nice temperatures for tomorrow. Thursday, we'll see a mix of some sun and cloud with continuing that one degree mark with a low of minus six. But we will be seeing a slightly cloudier day on Thursday. Then Friday, we'll be starting off this weekend slightly warmer for sure on Friday with a mix of some sun and cloud with that zero mark but we will be seeing a little bit more sun peeking behind those clouds that is another look at your weather forecast we'll have more news coming up after the break Welcome back to this week's edition of Pet Project, everybody. We're joined once again with Becca Lawrence from the Lloyd Minster and Community SPCA. And Becca, we got a lot to chat about this week, but before we get into that, let's go ahead and show off our animals for the week. So I'm gonna <laughs> cede the floor to you and you can introduce who we're, we're visiting today. Yeah, so this is Tilo and Emma. So they're kind of focusing on some people that are here right now, but Tilo, hi buddy. Yeah, they are our um, bonded pair. We're trying to find them homes together. And then uh, Tilo, he's our male. He's neutered, and he's about 128 pounds. And Emma is about 110, so we got almost 250 pounds worth of pooch here. And, uh, yeah, they, they came in together. They were surrendered together. And so Tilo himself seems a lot more attached 
to Emma. So we're really trying to find them a home together, which we know is a little bit hard with uh, the amount of dog that's here. But uh, <laughs> they're really, really sweet. They seem to love everything. They, you know, normally they're quite all over the place and snuggling. And actually, I think they're kind of checking out the little kitty that was over there. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, they're they're fairly docile dogs. They don't hear much of barking out of them, which is really nice. And yeah, like I said, oh, oh sorry, uh, Tilo is about four and Emma is about three. So yeah, they're still pretty young. Yeah, and honestly, they look like such sweet dogs, right? Like they seem very well behaved. They they're yes. keeping their eye around the uh, shelter there, but you know, obviously, they seem very calm. I imagine they would probably be really good dogs for maybe somebody who just got an acreage or a farm. Yes. You know, farm dogs are really good to have in pairs because you know you don't want your dog to get lonely on those long nights or weekends <laughs> when you're gone. So it's always good to have a uh, extra dog around to keep them company. And they, like I said, they both seem so well behaved and. And as larger dogs, it's really nice when you're able to give them a lot of space, you know, to help burn off that energy when they can run around and they can roam and, and things like that. So perhaps if there's somebody out there who, you know, just became the owner of their new farm or their acreage and, and they're looking for somebody to help keep an eye around, on things around the farm, certainly, you know, get in contact with the SPCA and, and check in with Tilo and Emma. But uh, we'll move on to our next subject because we got a lot to talk about this week. So you guys have a new fundraiser coming coming up and uh, you're doing a collaboration with Spiro's in town which is a great local restaurant you know we always like to give them a, a good shout out because they do so many wonderful yes. things in the community and here's a prime example so I'll just once again yeah. let you kind of tell the people what to look forward to yeah so they put fundraisers on every month and you know this this year we finally got in on the on the fun and so we're hoping around the 21st that we'll start advertising for it but uh, but yeah it's just a pizza fundraiser do you, it's, uh, you fill out your form on what you want, and, and then on the 14th, I believe, uh, before the Easter weekend, that's when everyone can come and pick up their pizzas. So, yeah, it, it, it helps us out, and then you get Spiro's Pizza. So it's really a win-win. <laughs> yeah, and I got to say, I love Spiro's Pizza. It's really good. Whenever we order pizza for the office here, for everybody, you know, if we have a luncheon or something, it's always Spiro's because everybody yeah. loves it. It's really good food. So certainly mark that on your calendars. Make sure you're putting in an order and getting your pie. Uh, and we have another one coming up sooner, so actually right away, which is your St. Patrick's Day event. So once again, yes. Bagel, why don't you let the people know what they can look for forward to with that yeah so on st patrick's day which is tomorrow i believe <laughs> or no thursday sorry i think 17th anyway <laughs> yeah uh yeah we're having a meet and greet night so if there's an animal that you've really been keeping your eye on and you just kind of want to come in and and meet that animal one-to-one -one, you know we're going to have a space set up so that you can have that time frame so it, all of our information is on the on the facebook page you can check that out uh, but yeah, we'll be booking time slots, things like that. And then uh, we'll have cupcakes and treats available. And, you know, obviously giving a shout out to Lloydminster Co-op because they're making the cupcakes for us. So we're really excited about that. But yeah, like I, like I said, if there's just an animal that you've really been trying to keep your eye on and, and it's, you know, you think it's time to come and meet them and see if they're the one for you, then definitely book a time slot for on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, absolutely. There's no better time because you can go and visit the animals, but you can also get cupcakes from the co-op, which is another great yes. local organization, and they also make great food. Again, I love going to the co-op bakery and getting some of their items. Beautiful. And uh, one more thing we have to kind of chit-chat about before we let you go and, you know, take care of Tilo and Emma again <laughs> is uh, the Collector's Convention, which is coming up here right away. And you guys will have a presence there. So once again, I'm just going to let you tell the people kind of what to look forward to for that yeah so babs gaming and sports cars they're putting on a collector con and initially they were just doing it at uh, one of the halls here in town but then the family expo invited them to join them so it's on the 26th and 27th i believe that weekend the last weekend in march and uh yeah it's just gonna be a lot of fun they're gonna have um, a silent auction with proceeds coming back to the spca and they're gonna have um an NHL and Super Mario tournament. Ooh. So if you want to get in on that, that's yeah. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, you know, like proceeds coming back to the SBCA. They're a great new store here in town. They're not even a year old yet. So and then obviously tons of family fun at the Family Expo. So 
we're, we're going to be there and you can support us and a new store and the Family Expo. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And once again, shout out to Babs. Uh, it, it's always wonderful to see local businesses, you know, help out local organizations. And I can't think of a better one than the Lloydminster SPCA. You guys are my favorite for sure. But unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week. But I want to thank yeah. you, Becca. And I want to thank Tilo and Emma for stopping by and saying hi. And obviously, if anybody out there is interested in picking those two up, make an appointment, call into the SPCA, you know, it's uh, make it happen. They're, they're a lovely pair. So somebody out there, go ahead and pick them up. But once yes. again, thank you so much for stopping by, Becca, and we'll speak with you again next week. Perfect. We'll see you next week. Pet Project is sponsored by the Pet Pad. For total pet care, think Pet Pad. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. Speaking with us today for primetime local news is author Mac Little, and we are speaking on her latest novel called Daughter of Hades. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Of course, we're glad to be able to have you on here. So I can already see you got your book in the background there. I love seeing the main cover of it. Now, this book already sounds intense from the description. Can you kind of explain the main plot of it for all our viewers and your fans out there? Sure. It, Daughter of Hades is a historical romance, and it focuses on Denny Obosi and her twin brother, Jimmy, who escaped slavery on from the island of Barbados on a pirate ship. And on the other side of the ocean, we have two French Huguenot brothers who escaped persecution in France, uh, and they signed themselves up to become indentured servants. And the lives of these two siblings, uh, two sets of siblings intersect. And at the center of it is a romance between Denia Bosi and a Chinese pirate called uh, Li Zhang. And did you have like a moment where you found some inspiration for this idea or where did you get the inspiration to write this book? Of course, uh, I've always been a fan of historical romance novels, but I never really saw uh, anybody that looked like me, you know, featured in it, uh, any person of color. And so I kind of left the genre behind for a while. And then uh, I came across Diana Gabel Dunn's um, Outlander series and it not only was it a beautiful romance but it was an intelligent novel well-rounded characters and well-researched I was like oh. you know it's like a revelation and other authors like Alyssa Cole she has uh personal colors you know as leads and romance novels I was like oh my gosh this can be done so when I realized it can be done, I had to do it because there, there are stories I want to talk about. And so my favorite, um, my favorite type of romance novel is a pirate novel. So this is, so I had to write this book. <laughs> And I personally find this amazing that you are doing this, you know, being able to write some characters in that kind of represent many people of color out there. I think it's great to have that representation in novels that a lot of us haven't seen when we were younger. And for me personally, I am a fan of Pirates of the Caribbean and I love just seeing, just involving pirates and pirate ships and having a little romance inside of that, I think is just flawless, just great. I think I'm going to be checking out this book myself. And have you seen lots of support so far since it's been released? been getting a lot of great support, especially from um, fans in Africa and the Caribbean, because they are seeing their culture represented. And when it's impossible to have a, a romance novel set in the 17th century, where slavery in Africa is not involved, but usually you see um, Africans depicted as two-dimensional uh, plot devices to move it along. So I have well-rounded characters. I discuss the religion and incorporate the religion and their cultural practices in the book. And they're like, finally, I feel seen. And that's so gratifying for me to hear because, you know, we all want to be seen. I've always, and also for people who aren't, you know, 
marginalized or persons of color, it's important for them to see this and see us as, as well-rounded human beings and to relate to us. So yeah, I feel like I'm having some impact and I'm really excited about that. Well, that's great to hear that you are receiving lots of support. Now, where all can people be able to find this novel online and in stores, just so they are aware? Oh, absolutely. You can get it on Amazon.com uh, and um, you can get it Kindle and print and uh, you can follow me on uh, Twitter. My, uh, my Twitter account is at Zen Baby, B-A-B-I-E. And yeah, so you can get me on Amazon. Perfect. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us today, Mac. Thank you for having me. Bye. <laughs> That is all the time we have for now. If you missed anything, you can catch more news coming up in the next hour.